I know, I know. There are perhaps other headlines being discussed of great interest today, but we'll talk about several others on a local level. Yes, I know. Cal Perry is leaving, as he confirmed earlier this afternoon in a video posted to the Big Blue Nation, a very well thought out, very eloquent and, and to the point video that if you haven't watched, I do suggest you do. I didn't have time to pull it and put it on the show tonight. It lasted about four minutes, but it was, it was very well thought out. He expressed himself very well. And uh, I think it is being received very well by the Big Blue Nation, who is currently awaiting to see who will be the new head of the men's basketball program. We don't know the answer to that question as of yet. That's uh, all that I have on that for this evening. I do have a host of local information to pass along to you tonight. We'll get up on, caught up on a couple of calls of emergency from over the weekend and uh, several other reports. Let's go ahead and pick it up there. As I told you last night, two of those calls over the course of the weekend were related as to the moving of the same structure which caused numerous problems, traffic tie-ups for hours on two different days, two different locations, and also some damages left behind, I do believe, as well. That was also during or around at least one of the occasions that there was a side-by-side, -side, a hit-and-run accident in the tip-top area involving a side-by-side -side reported to McGoffa County 911. The rescue squad, local law enforcement, EMS, all, all responded to the area and did an extensive search after extensive details came in to them. About two adults and a small child, two to five years of age, the small child of which being the most seriously injured in a, what again was described as a hit and run side by side accident, but to no avail. No one, law enforcement, EMS, or otherwise, could find anyone matching that description or related to that accident after an extensive search. So it is still, at this time, even unknown as to whether or not it took place, and if so, if there were, or how bad the injuries were related. It did sound like a very serious situation if you were monitoring your police scanner, but at this time, there was no discovery of anyone or anything found. Now, two other calls over the course of the weekend, the before-mentioned last night situation involving this mobile home. This, as I informed you last night, was Saturday on Route 40. Route 40 shut down for a number of hours, first reduced to a single lane of traffic, and then shut down completely as it took a number of hours for crews to be able to remove a single-wide mobile home. I say that with some degree of uncertainty as it appeared to be a structure which was built on top of what used to be a frame for a single wide mobile home. Nevertheless, the large structure, home type of structure was being moved by a truck, if you will, and the driver stating that he had been crowded off the roadway by an oncoming vehicle when it resulted in this mess as you see here. The road being shut down for a number of hours and then authorities finally reopening the road that evening. No injuries, no other reports of incident that day. However, the following day a very similar situation involving the exact same truck, trailer, and individual on 460 west out of Sayersville near the horse park. That's where the two scenes look very, very similar. And in between those two scenes, there was a string of mailboxes which were taken out on Route 40 on Sunday as the trailer was being moved after getting uprighted to the Morgan County area by a man from Carlisle, Kentucky. This was a situation near the horse park as authorities again say the driver lost control of his load. It over went off the road and over into the ditch and completely destroyed it here. It was ordered off the road by McGoffin County Sheriff's Deputy Eugene Salyer. It is to be dismantled on site and not moved any further in any form or fashion except in pieces and hauled off in a safe manner. No charges were filed. The man claimed to be a private citizen, an individual who was moving the structure for himself, and he was not a company or a moving company, he said. However, uh, it is his burden to pay for any of the damages that were left behind for a number of mailboxes and other properties and should that not be uh, remedied or re relief seen by the landowners, then charges may be pending by the McGoffin County Sheriff's Department. And another road closure on Sunday, another hairy situation for a motorist traveling in the Route 30 area, what we all know as the Arnett Curve, uh, just past the intersection with the Mountain Parkway where a tree had fallen and this car clipped that tree also as soon as it did. Power lines, which had come down with the tree, were wrapped, became wrapped around the vehicle. 
um, some possibly charged to the point uh, at least that to make sure they had to sit in the car until the power company could come make sure that they were not live before they could get out of the vehicle safely. There were two adults in the SUV. Uh, no one suffered any injuries. I'm told no one went to the area hospital or an area hospital, but the road in the Route 30 area was closed for as well a significant amount of time until power company crews could get there and make sure that those inside the car could get out safely and that the car could move and or that the car could move safely without any danger to any individuals. In other headlines tonight, MaysvilleOnline.com, a news publication in and around the Robertson County area, is reporting, as are a number of other institutions, that McGoffa County native and Robertson County Schools Superintendent Sanford Holbrook has been suspended for six months, effective June the 1st. This according to, says Maysville Online, an agreed order from the Educational Professional Standards Board in Frankfurt saying that Holbrook agrees not to perform in a superintendent position during the suspension period. There were a number of documents cited by the paper saying that the EPSB did not indicate the reason for the suspension in and of itself, but did say that Holbrook has to go on to provide written proof to the board that he has completed a professional development course on educator ethics and that he also has to supply written proof to the board that he has completed a professional development course on state school law before he can be reinstated after that six-month suspension, and that he will not be reinstated until all of the listed conditions are satisfied to the EPSB. The suspension also, it says, will be subject to several conditions for 10 years thereafter that Holbrook shall not receive any disciplinary action from any school district in which he is employed. That also includes resignation under allegations of misconduct, termination, suspension, or reprimand issued by any school district in the Commonwealth of Kentucky during that 10 years. There was a vote held during the EPSB meeting just this week. Actually, the vote taking place last month, and that was said to have been unanimous, 12 to nothing. It's also understood that the superintendent's suspension is being taken pursuant to a complaint that was filed with the EPSB, not an action by the local school board. Holbrook's attorney, identified as Regina Jackson, said they had no comment at this time as of earlier today, according to, again, Maysville Online. Holbrook was hired as the superintendent of Robertson County Schools back in 2015 and has served in that capacity as since. He's also a member of the Board of Regents at Moorhead State University. I'll be right back. Spring isn't the only season here. It's also senior season. It's a season for love, a season for Jesus, and a season to shop local at the seasonal shop. With spring colors, styles, and fashions by Charlie Page and Simply Southern and more of your favorites, new arrivals in bags and totes and jewelry and more. And they've got everything lemon lavender, spa essentials for a little at-home pampering. And from simple to chinoiserie, must-see home decor is at the seasonal shop in downtown Sagersville. There are several risk factors that may put a patient at risk for heart disease. Especially people who have diabetes or hypertension or high cholesterol and have a family history of heart disease. Neglecting to see a cardiologist can put you in trouble. You may develop problems that may not be reversible. We see many people who do not have an actual diagnosis of a heart problem but may be at risk of heart disease and we do whatever we can to help mitigate that risk to help prevent disease in the future. ARH more for Appalachia. Whether you've got a new ride and you want it to stand out in the crowd or you want your current ride to look and feel like a new one, no one does lifts, wheels, and tires better than Conley's. Stop in now for spring tire specials, free quotes, and 0% financing or log on to ConleyTire.net. 
Sagersville National Bank hopes to help you start the new year with financial freedom and peace of mind. From new services like Apple and Google Pay with your debit card to their more than century of being dedicated to being your personal or business banking institution, they're here for you with digital, phone, or in-person banking at both locations. Raise your hands. Who thinks math is hard? Now, who thinks feeding a family of four, six, eight, or ten is even harder? Well, so do we. Welcome to Math and a Meal Made Easy. Did you know you can get a family meal deal at your Sagersville Lee's for as low as $4.61 a person with bone-in chicken, four fifteen dollars a person with our famous strips? That's chicken sides and biscuits. Count to 100, thank a math teacher. Feed a family for less, come to your Sagersville Lee's. I believe in Kentucky. I believe in Kentucky. I believe in small town values. And mom and dad and the things they handed down. I believe some of the best people in the world are farmers. I believe in insurance that protects families, homes, and cars. I believe in always finding a way to do what you love. I am Kentucky. I am Kentucky. I am Kentucky. If you are here with me last night, you saw that I had just enough time to get back to the studio after spending the time with family watching the eclipse to get some of the wonderful pictures, just a few of the wonderful pictures and other things sent in to us by readers and watchers on the program last night. Tonight I will add to that in hopes of adding to that a little later on because I think it will be a, a pretty, pretty awesome interview to sit down and talk to this family, which has now done this twice. They made the trip once before to see 2017 eclipse. And this one, well, for them, in every way imaginable, I think, was bigger and better all the way around. As they're still, uh, right now, I think, getting close to getting back to being home after taking the trip yesterday to the path of totality. I got to have just a brief phone conversation with Jessica Allen earlier, so he was trotting. I got to have a brief phone conversation with Jessica Allen just a little bit ago. She was still traveling. Uh, she learned her lesson in 2017 when they tried to come home the same day from the solar eclipse, and it took them eight hours to get from Hopkinsville to Lexington. So they stayed overnight in the Columbus area where they were yesterday at the Columbus Air Park, a beautiful wide open space with also a Renaissance festival going on at the same time. How cool is that? And that's where she and her mom, uh, her daughters, Caitlin and Brooklyn, uh, some familiar faces you'll also see there. I see Debbie Patrick. Uh, her dad was there as well, her brother and her niece. And uh, they all met up and had just an outstanding view of yesterday's solar eclipse under the path of totality and an outstanding experience uh, that I hope I get to hear more about as uh, these young ladies got to really witness history firsthand, unlike they'll ever get to see again to this degree. It's almost there. It's getting <laughs> Almost. The excitement can be heard in Jessica's voice quite clearly, just as clear as you can see what totality looked like for them at the Columbus Air Park on yesterday. What an amazing trip this must have been for them. Yes, you can take your See the difference one percent makes. <laughs> what do you think, Lex? <laughs> Your first ever eclipse. What do you rate it? One through ten. A thousand. <laughs> That is cool. That is so very, very cool. Jessica and to your family, thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you very, very much for letting us take a little bit of that ride with you. <laughs> Up next, tonight's calendar brought to you by McGoffin Farm Bureau, starting with a birthday. 
Yes, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday this ninth day of April to Brandon Holiday. Happy birthday to you from a host of family and friends who wanted to wish you the very best of 39th birthdays. Happy birthday, Brandon Holiday. Happy, happy birthday to you. Going on to other announcements, we will go on to, oh, the free tree seedling giveaway is back. The McGoffa County Conservation District has tree seedlings to give away through this Thursday or until they run out. It's Tuesday, just a reminder. 349-1919 is the number to call. Tree seedlings to get for free from your conservation district through Thursday or, again, until supplies run out. So get yours while you can. Homecoming is coming up for some friends of ours who want to invite you to join them. Kearney Free Will Baptist Church is hosting Homecoming on this Sunday. Pastor Lonnie Cole invites everyone, all members, past and present, to attend. Dinner will follow services beginning at 11. And they're picking and grinning again. The Kearney Free Will Baptist Church is going to have picking and grinning Saturday the 20th at 7 o'clock. And Pastor Cole and everyone invites you to join them for picking and grinning. Water into Wine Food Pantry is having... A sign up May the 1st for new clients. For more information, call 349 6301. A food pantry sign up Wednesday, May the 1st at the Lakefront Church of God or Water into Wine. That's to allow time for folks who might work or otherwise be obligated to have an opportunity to sign up for services for the food pantry. A reminder this is garbage cleanup, the McGoffin County wide cleanup campaign. This week through Friday is for District 2. Next week it will be for District 3. And you know the drill. No hazardous waste. No construction debris. Nothing with paint, liquids, of things of that nature. No household waste. But all the other stuff you can't put out. And you can also put tires out. As long as they're not on the rim or wheel, you can set tires out as well. If you have any questions, call the judge's office at 349-2313. They'll be glad to help. With that said, call me when you've got a calendar announcement that you need passed along. And of course, as always, that includes those birthdays and anniversaries that we love to tell everyone about. Here's the link to get all of that on the show. Funeral service announcements as we go on brought to you nightly by the McGoffin County Funeral Home include services which have now been set for Thursday morning at 11 for Sue Salyer. Sandy Sue Miller Salyer, 76 of Royalton, Sue passed away Monday at her home, survived by her husband Jerry and her sons Dwayne and Jamie, daughters Tanya Williams and Chelsea Shepard, her brothers Arnold and Sam and Terry Miller, her sister Debbie Allen, nine grandkids and one great-grandchild. In addition to her parents, Sue is preceded in death by her son, David, and brothers Kelly Lee Miller, Ronnie Miller, and Jerry Glenn. Services again start Thursday morning at 11 from the McGoffin County Funeral Home Visitation tomorrow evening from 6 until 9. 72-year-old Mary Catherine Fletcher Jordan of Sagersville passed away Saturday, survived by her companion Vernon Eldridge, sons Tommy Ray Likens and Ronnie Cash Likens, her daughter Rosemary Newcomb, a brother Jimmy Fletcher, and eight grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. Services will be held Thursday at 1 from the Half Mountain Church. Visitation will be Wednesday after 1. And lastly, from Jones and Preston, 69-year-old Danny McCarty of Callista, Kentucky, passed away Sunday, survived by his wife, Tobiana McCarty, a son, two daughters, a brother, nine sisters, and three grandkids with services to be held tomorrow at 1 with burial to follow at the Highland Memorial Park. The funeral direction is under the care of the Jones and Preston Funeral Home. There where every day starts, it's made and it ends. From hitting the floor to hitting the road and back, your feet carry the day's duties. And if you're hurting from what might be a work or sports or stress-related fracture you don't even know about, diabetic or that all too often heel pain that just won't go away, or any type of pain or discomfort or in need of wound care, come to where they care. Put your best foot forward and come visit our podiatry team. We care about our patients and their feet. That's Dr. Cheney and her team at Hope Family Podiatry Center next to Hope Family Pediatrics on the Mountain Parkway.
Someone dies in the U.S. every seven minutes from an overdose, and over half of the population gets or takes pills from a friend or a relative. And about 46 million and counting are exposed to narcotics in their drinking water. So don't toss them, flush them, or leave them lying around. Safely dispose of your unneeded meds anytime at Parkway Pharmacy. Where you can always talk to a pharmacist when you need one. Jeremy Camp is bringing his theater tour live to the Mountain Arts Center in Prestonsburg, Kentucky on Saturday, April 13th at 7 p.m. With over 6 million albums sold, 43 number one singles, 5 GMA Dub Awards, and a Grammy nomination, Jeremy Camp is a Christian music superstar. Get your tickets today and share the room with one of the world's most powerful Christian recording artists. Saturday, April 13th at 7 p.m. Stop by the People's Bank box office, call us at 1-888-MACARTS or visit us at MacArts.com. <coughs> And that's another Tuesday down. Thank you for being a part of it. I will see you back here tomorrow night. Well, as you can imagine, Mother Nature is kind of putting the brakes on baseball and softball seasons. And uh, I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Not much more need to go into that any further, uh, except for talking about your Licking Valley RECC outlook. Where we do, as I told you just in brief yesterday, have a number of days with a number of shower and storm chances therein. Well, my apologies. Local Doppler radar is not functioning at this particular moment in time. I'll give it just a second and uh, tell you we topped out at 67 degrees today. We are at 60 and falling, but we're not falling very far. We're only going to go to about 58 and kind of hold pat right there for the overnight. Yeah, pretty mild one. Uh, southerly winds 5 to 16 miles per hour and an 80% chance of some showers, uh, the majority of which will pick back up again during the overnight early morning hours. A few light sprinkles and some drizzle between now and then, but uh, a little bit of a, a break for the most part for the next few hours. But an 80% chance of showers picking back up, maybe adding another quarter of an inch or so during the overnight early morning hours, taking us into your Wednesday, which will top out right around 71. Uh, it will also see winds out of the south up to 50. 15 miles per hour or so early and then up to 20-25 later on tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. We'll have a 90% chance of showers and thunderstorms, um, the majority of which after 3 o'clock into your afternoon tomorrow and continuing on and off throughout your Wednesday night. Uh, maybe a half inch of rain during the day, maybe another quarter of an inch at night except for any thunderstorms that could develop into your Wednesday, Thursday carrying on with a 90% chance of showers and storms, another half of an inch during the day, another quarter of an inch that night, with the exception of thunderstorms Thursday, mid-70s, and nighttime lows fall dramatically down to the low, or mid-40s, rather, at 46, as you saw. And Friday, we're still lingering uh, with 60% chance of showers and thunderstorms, albeit partly sunny, and temperatures definitely backing off to around 56. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you're staring at an upward trend, certainly. We will start off Saturday improving up to the upper 60s. And the first and maybe only dry day, probably not the only dry day, but the first one for the next several in entirety, sunny, 67, mostly clear, and 55 that night. Sunday, 78, pushing 80. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday of next week, nighttime lows very consistently mid to upper 50s. And the sunshine sticks around after a nice day on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. With it, though, we see some shower chances. Not all great, but 20 to 30% chance of showers and storms across the board. Bottom line, we've got another few wet ones to get through before we see uh, a little bit of dry condition or two this weekend. <coughs> and that's another Tuesday down. Thank you for being a part of it. I will see you back here tomorrow night.